Uh, good morning. We are continuing stepwise approach to the diagnosis and we are talking about swelling neck and it is part 2. Just to recall, swelling neck, midline moves with swelling, goiter moves with protrusion of tongue, thyroglossal cyst. And here triangle, single cystic, brittle cyst, single solid lymph node. Posterior triangle, single cystic, cystic hygroma, single solid lymph node, multiple in the anterior posterior triangle lymph nodes, there could be acute infections, metastasis, tuberculosis, lymphoma, and sarcoidosis in the Western countries, especially. So let's talk about midline. Moves with swelling, the cause is goiter. A goiter is a name given to enlarged thyroid gland. And thyroid gland is fixed to trachea because of pretracheal fascia. That is why when one swallows, the trachea moves and it moves the thyroid attached to it. Like if you see, the, th the trachea moves upward. That is why you have to ask the patient to swallow. It's much easier to ask him to take a sip of water, as in this patient. Midline swelling goiter. If in midline it moves with protrusion of tongue, it's a thyroglossal cyst. Thyroglossal cyst develops from remnant of thyroglossal duct. The cyst is fixed to the heart bone. Trachea, thyroid cartilage, here is the hyoid bone and this is the swelling. If you ask the patient to protrude the tongue, this will move upward. Anterior triangle, single brachial cyst. It is transluminate. A brachial cyst is the remnant of brachial cleft. Anterior triangle, single in this area, is a brachial cyst. If this was a solid, then it would have a lymph node or very rarely chemodactoma, which is a potato tumor. But let's forget about that. Simply remember brachial cyst, if cystic, if solid, lymph node. Posterior triangle, single cystic. It's a cystic hygroma. A cystic hygroma is a congenital collection of lymphatic cells which contain clear colorless lymph. They are probably derived from clusters of lymph channels that fail during intrauterine development to connect with each other and become normal lymphatic pathways. There is a reason why a child is shown. Because the commonest age of presentation is this and not an adult, but could be present in adult also. This is the steroglidomastoid. This is posterior triangle. Whether it's anterior triangle, posterior triangle, it is single or multiple swelling. If it is solid, think of and large lymph node. The causes are secondary to an acute infection, tuberculosis, metastasis, lymphoma and sarcoidosis as we, as we have talked before. If a patient gives history of acute onset problems, acute onset of malaise, fever, rigor, contact with people with infectious disease, pain in the throat, running nose, showing that there is some infection somewhere in head and neck, think of the large lymph node is secondary to acute infection. And the lymph node would be tender if you touch it, obviously mildly tender. It is mandatory therefore in a case of swelling of the neck 
to examine the mouth from inside, to examine the nose and to examine the ears and to examine the scalp. Tuberculosis. If a patient is giving chronic history of weakness, weight loss, low grade fever and night sweat, contact with patients with tuberculosis, think of tuberculosis. And in this case, the lymph nodes, they are firm and mitted. The multiple lymph nodes, as as they enlarge, the case is necrosis and it forms a mass and the multiple film roll for the lymph nodes give rise to a mated appearance. But obviously, if there is a one lymph node initially, it may not give that appearance. Metastasis. If a patient is given history of loss of appetite, significant loss of weight, pulmonary symptoms, elementary symptoms, skeletal symptoms and there is a lymph nodes in the neck especially if lymph nodes are hard then one must think of metastasis interestingly the skin, mouth, nose, larynx and pharynx are common sites for neoplasms and although head and neck cancers commonly present with metastasis in lymph glands they are not usually associated with symptoms of distant metastasis such as general malaise and loss of symptom. Therefore, a thing to remember is if somebody is presenting with a large lymph node in the lower part of the neck, they are single or multiple, but they are hard, firm, solid, then it's mandatory to examine the abdomen in a male testes in a female the breast because these are the sites from which a metastasis may occur into the neck also lymphoma if there is a loss of appetite loss of weight pulmonary elementary and these things symptoms are there then one can think of even lymphoma especially if the lymph nodes are firm and rubbery if they are lymph nodes which are present in the neck, they are firm and rubbery, not matted, think of lymphoma. Once a thought of lymphoma comes in mind, then it is mandatory to examine all lymph node groups in the body. That includes the axillary group of lymph nodes, that includes the angular group of lymph nodes and lymphatic organs also, extra lymphatic lymphoma they are present like liver and spleen and in abdomen, the middle and lymph nodes. That will become an integral part of examination of neck. So therefore, if in the swelling of neck, one has to see the mouth from inside, the nose, the ears, not only this, depending upon the cause we are suspecting, it might become mandatory to examine the abdomen, examine the breast, examine the testes, examine the skeleton system, examine the inguinal lymph nodes, examine the axillary lymph nodes, examine the liver, examine the spleen, examine the abdomen for middle and swelling. Coming back to the original concept map, swelling neck, swelling neck, midline, Moves with swelling, goiter, move with protrusion of tongue, thyroglossal cyst. Anterior triangle, single cystic vagal cyst. Posterior triangle, single cystic cystic hybroma. Anterior triangle, single solid lymph node. Posterior triangle, single solid lymph node. Multiple lymph nodes. The commonest causes are lymph node are acute infection, metastasis, tuberculosis, lymphoma, and sarcoidosis. Have a good day. I hope you enjoy yourself. Have happy moments.